So if you don't know him yet, you get to know him. You're going to get to know him this morning. This is Pastor Tyler Moore. Everybody say, hi, Pastor Tyler. And you may be putting two and two together and realizing that Cassie Moore is our director of Next Gen Ministries here at St. Mark, and Tyler Moore is her husband. See, when Cassie took the call to come to St. Mark, Tyler was serving at a church in Tampa Bay, Florida. Mm -hmm. And because he's such a loving, sacrificial, and courageous husband, he said, you know what, so that you can take this call, because St. Mark is such a cool place, I'll step out of my call so that you can take this one. And now he's serving as a teacher at Epiphany Lutheran School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that means he also gets to worship here and help out here. And this morning, he gets to preach here, and you're in for a great message. Uh, we're so thankful that you get to be a part of the St. Mark family and share your gifts and your calling with us, Pastor Tyler, and we're excited to hear from you this morning. So let's give, let's give a warm St. Mark welcome to Pastor Tyler Moore. Thank you, thank you. I got to say, I don't know that I've ever stood so close to Pastor Matt. Usually he's a little further away. I hope you could get both of us in the shot at the same time. It was like Laurel and Hardy up here. Um, all right. So I want to start off by saying to you, to people watching online, people here in the room, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you have something special happening here at St. Mark. There is something special happening. God is at work in and through this church and the community. The things that I see behind the scenes, the attention to detail to make everything, not just the Sunday morning experience, but everything excellent. Something powerful is happening here. And you should be proud to call this your church. I'm proud to call this my church to be here with you guys. Um, and you guys have Pastor Matt Popovitz. He's the best preacher in the Lutheran church, hands down. And the chance to serve and ministry alongside him was like, uh, sure, I'll leave Tampa Bay, home of the Rays, World Series bound, Tampa Bay Rays. <laughs> now that everybody hates me, um, <laughs> let's say we have a sermon, shall we? Let's go to God in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this chance that we get to gather together, whether here in person or watching online. Lord, we thank you that your word is able to speak to us. Lord, I thank you for the chance to share your word. Lord, let this message be your message. Let it not be about me or from me, but instead be from you. Lord, I submit myself to you, and I pray that everybody who is listening to this may do the same, that we would hear your truth, that your Holy Spirit would be at work in everything that we do and everything that we're thinking. And in this moment, Lord, be present and be known. We thank you and we praise you in your name. Amen. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have absolutely loved this sermon series, The Road to Realness, this idea of taking a look at who we are, taking a hard look at ourselves and the personality that we have, the road and the path that we're on in our lives. I think it's important to recognize not only our own personality, our own road, our own path, but also the path of the people around us, right? Jesus commands us to love our neighbors as ourselves. And, and what better way to love than to get to know people in our lives? And this is going to help us to love. It's going to help us when it comes to conflict. It's going to help us in arguments when suddenly you realize this person's not just saying this to annoy me. They're saying this because they truly believe it, because they're fundamentally wired differently, and if you've missed any messages over the past couple of weeks, they're all online. Be sure to check that, those out because I was talking to somebody in between services and they were saying like, yeah, I kind of listened to the first couple and I was thinking, yeah, I don't know if I get it. But then I heard one that spoke to me and there will be one that will speak to you. Maybe you haven't heard it yet. There's still a couple more messages in the series, um, but we're all wired so intricately and beautifully. God created us for a special purpose. And speaking of that, Jesus didn't just command love your neighbor as yourself. He also said love God, right? And this is a way for us to get to know God better. If I want to learn about Salvador Dali, I could read all sorts of books about him and about his life. But what better way to get to know an artist than to study his art? It's the same with our creator. What better way to get to know the creator than to study his creation and to start with those made in his image? And so that's why this series is so powerful and truly so important within our culture today. Now, in today's message, we're going to be talking about the road of commitment. The road of commitment. Maybe you're thinking, okay, well, what, what does it mean? Let's, let's take a look at some statements that somebody who's on the road of commitment may resonate with. This may speak to you. 
Uh, start off with, uh, I like to be prepared. Scratch that. I need to be prepared. Uh, this is somebody that they didn't wait for a hurricane to form in the Gulf. They already had their hurricane supplies way back in like June. They have their go bag ready to go. See, they see every potential pitfall ahead of them on the road and they're ready for it. I need to be prepared. And because of that, I make responsible choices. The choices and decisions that I make aren't just based on a whim, but they are based upon an informed decision because I see the worst case scenarios and I've thought through every possibility in the scenarios ahead of me. I make responsible choices. I hate being out of control. Now a little clarity here. When I say I hate being out of control, this isn't talking about being in the spotlight, being in control of other people. No, this is being in control of yourself because you need to make those responsible decisions, so you want to be of the right mind in the right setting. You hate being out of control. Um, I trust those whom I love, and I love those whom I trust. It's tough to earn the trust of somebody on the road of commitment, but once you do, oh, they're with you for life. I wrestle with self-doubt and anxiety. Now that's true of the vast majority of us, it seems, but for this group in particular, because they see all the weaknesses in any potential plan and situation ahead of them, well, the one that they're around the most is themselves. And so as they analyze themselves, they see those weaknesses and they become magnified and they fixate upon them. So they wrestle with self-doubt and anxiety. And then lastly, I'm a very loyal friend. It's again, once you have earned the trust of somebody on the road of commitment, you have a friend for life. Now, we call this the road of commitment, but if we wanted to kind of give it a little bit more of a negative light, and to be honest, a little bit more um, truth, it, it would be the road of worry, the, wor the road of, of anxiety. Because as I mentioned, everybody on this path, they look ahead and they see all the potential potholes in the road ahead. And the way you respond to that knowledge is going to inform your path. You could either respond and say, okay, I'm going to be prepared for anything that the life throws my way. You're going to, when you go camping, you're going to have every first aid kit possible. You're going to have the tent. You're going to have the bear spray. You're going to have this. Or the other path you could take is say, the road ahead is fraught with peril, so I'm staying right here. <laughs> I'm not even going camping because there might be bears out there. You could take either of those two paths. And we see that actually as we kind of look at some people that follow this road. I like to look at fictional characters. So the fictional characters that, that I see that follow this road, um, I picked three of them. The first is Bilbo Baggins. Tolkien from The Hobbit and uh, Lord of the Rings, Bilbo Baggins. Uh, then the second would be Cameron, the friend of Ferris Bueller, that the Gordie Howe jersey-wearing friend of Ferris Bueller from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And then the third is Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. I think I've covered all age ranges with those three characters. Um, so the idea between those characters is you could look at them and say they're characterized by their fear. You could look at them and say, I mean, you look at Piglet, right? And he's known for kind of stuttering and stammering along his concerns about every situation that they're in. Cameron begrudgingly, very begrudgingly agreed to join in on what could only be described as the greatest day of playing hooky ever. And then Bilbo, well, Bilbo literally had adventure knock on his front door, and he said, yeah, but I like my hobbit hole with 11 Zs and second breakfast. And who could blame him? Let's be honest. <laughs> See, you could take these three characters and classify them by their fear. It's the same thing with those on the road of commitment. Because there is fear, there is anxiety, there is worry. But you could also look at those three and see tremendously loyal friends. For Bilbo, once he met Gandalf, he followed him into great danger. For Cameron, eventually he gave in to his challenging friend, Ferris Bueller. And who is Piglet without the lovable Winnie the Pooh? See, with people on the road to commitment, once they trust somebody, they are loyal to the very end. They will follow them to the end of the earth, or in the case of Bilbo, Middle Earth. That is what it means to be on this road of commitment. Now, when you look biblically, there, there, I've got somebody from the Old Testament and somebody from the New Testament that we can look at. When it comes to the New Testament, uh, that was our reading that we heard Pastor Matt just give just a little bit ago. Peter. Peter, who maybe you think of, well, loyal, he, he betrayed Jesus. He, he denied him three times. Yes, but he was there. 
He was there at the cross. Yes, he was wrestling with the notion like, okay, I see that if I align myself with Jesus in this moment, bad things will happen, but he was still there. He was still loyal. But the story that I really want to focus on is this walking on water business. I love this story because here's Jesus who, who tells his disciples, go away. <laughs> Get in the boat and leave because I'm going to stay here. He understood the power of solitude. Maybe he was on the road to achievement. We don't know because that's something that they love. Um, so he sends them off into this boat. And they're halfway across the Sea of Galilee when a storm crops up. And Jesus says, well, that's close enough. I could walk there. <laughs> and so being Jesus, he walks out on the water. Now let's put ourselves in the point of view of those disciples. They're scared. There's a storm they can barely see, and they look off to the horizon, and there's somebody walking towards us on the water. And their response, it's a ghost. And Jesus says, do not fear, for it is I. Then we pick up where, where Peter, this shows that Peter is on the road of commitment, because Peter, having just heard Jesus say, do not fear, for it is I, here is what Peter says. He says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Now, this is how we know that Jesus was sinless. Because if it was me in Jesus' shoes, very soggy shoes, um, at this moment, I'd be like, Peter, what did I just get done saying? I literally just said it's, uh, Dad, why do you, the Peter, the years I have to deal with this guy. Like I, I just, but Jesus just says, come. And Peter, with all of his fear and doubt, with his concerns having been confirmed, I guess, he takes hold of the side of the boat and he's willing to climb over the side and put his feet on the surface of the water and walk. See, that's the message of the road of commitment is you'll trust once you verify. You'll trust once you know that whatever it is is trustworthy. So when Peter calls out and says, says Jesus, if it's really you, uh, tell me to come to you. And Jesus says, okay, come here. And so he trusted enough to leave the boat. See, God did something incredible when Peter put his fear to the side. My Old Testament example comes from the book of Judges, Gideon. One of my favorite stories in the Bible. Because see, Gideon, he's just hanging out one day when suddenly an angel pops up in front of him. And the angel tells him, says, Gideon, you're going to lead a small handful of men to take out one of the most fearsome armies in the land, the Midianites. And Gideon's like, okay, first of all, few questions. One, who are you? And the angel's like, well, I'm an angel. He's like, yeah, prove it, because I need facts. I need to know that you are an angel. And so the angel makes fire shoot up out of a rock. And Gideon's like, okay, that, okay, you, well, that's pretty cool, cool. Angel, got it. Um, now, second question, this whole God telling me to take on the Midianites thing, how do I know that God is actually telling me to do, what, I'm going to test God, which is, that's what he does. He takes a fleece and he lays it on the ground. He says, angel, write this down, tell us to God. If, if I wake up in the morning and there is dew on the fleece, but not on the ground, then I will know I'll know that, that God wants me to do this. And so the angel's like, oh, okay, God, do the thing. And so sure enough, the next morning, Gideon wakes up, do on the fleece, not on the ground. And the angel's like, good enough for you? And Gideon's like, yeah, not by a long shot. I want you to flip it and reverse it. This time, no do on the, on the fleece, do on the ground. Do that, and I will trust God for sure, I promise. Okay, sure enough, wakes up the next morning, do on the ground, not on the fleece. And you know what Gideon did next? He defeated the Midianites. He defeated the Midianites because God sent him, because God was challenging him. God was calling him to go and do this great thing. See, when you put your fear to the side, God can do incredible things. Folks who are on the road to commitment, I want you to hear this loud and clear. Your fears are smaller than the amazing things that God can do. Let me say this again, because Gideon apparently need to hear it a couple times, and maybe so do you. Your fears are smaller, though still real. I want to I state that clearly. The fears that you have are legitimate. They're just smaller than the amazing things that God can do. Your fears are smaller than the amazing things that God can do. So the question is, how is God challenging you? 
What call to adventure do you have in your life? What, what Bilbo Baggins knock on the door to go to a new opportunity are you ignoring because it's, it's pretty safe here in my hobbit hole? I, I like being here and there, there is scary. Well, my friends, here is the enemy of there. Here, being safe here is the enemy of there, which is full of opportunity and new things. Safety is the enemy of success, which requires bold action and trust. What is God challenging you to do? Maybe it's a new job opportunity, and you're afraid. <laughs> you're afraid because, well, I already know how to do my current job, and I, I don't know if I'd be very good at the next one. Or maybe it's a relocation, and you're going, yeah, but I already know where everything is in the grocery store. And as somebody who just recently moved, I got to tell you, that should be a bigger deal because it's complete anarchy out there. It's crazy. Maybe it's a relationship and you're afraid to take it to the next level. You're afraid to make that commitment because you're not sure if it would be trustworthy. Maybe it's sharing your faith. Sharing the love that God has for you and for everybody else on this planet. Maybe it's sharing your faith with a friend. And you're thinking, yeah, yeah, but, but they're my friend now. What if, what if I say something that offends them? What if I say something wrong? What if, what if, don't let your what ifs get in the way of what could be. Do not let your what ifs get in the way of what could be. Because God can do amazing things. Maybe you're listening to this message and you're thinking, well, this isn't me, but I know somebody that this would apply to. Um, here are a couple of things that you can do to kind of help them along. First of all, be trustworthy. If you have the honor of being welcomed into the inner circle of somebody who's on this road of commitment, don't betray them. Do not betray that trust, because not only will you destroy the relationship, you will destroy that person. I, okay, I was, I was a little hesitant to share this, but one um, person that I, I found that really follows this road, that kind of has this personality, um, is my dog. Uh, and I know you're thinking, like, well, that's kind of offensive. Well, sorry. Um, so my dog, Bonzer, who's a toy Australian shepherd, he is too smart for his own good. And no matter what I try and offer him treat-wise, he will literally, like, I could cut off a piece of filet mignon and offer it to him, and he'll go... And he's pretty sure it's poisoned. I think that's the deal. He'll actually watch another dog eat and be like, uh, I'll wait and see how they turn out. That's how Bonzer is. And, and finally, he trusted enough to take the treat, and he loved it. And then he followed me around because he was a loyal friend at that point until just one time, one time, I tried to hide a pill in there. And he found it. And he will never take another treat from me again. <laughs> be trustworthy. Don't let them down. But then on top of that, um, and this is tough, challenge them. Because without challenge, somebody who's on the road of commitment, well, they don't need the road at all because they're going to stay right where they are. They're going to stay right in their safe little hobbit hole. Sometimes they need a little bump, a little push. They need a Ferris Bueller. They need a Gandalf. They need a Winnie the Pooh to encourage them to go out their front door. The, the wild world, yes, is scary, but there's somebody by your side as you go. Now, those of you who are listening to this, you're like, yes, this is totally me. The irony is there's a pretty good chance you're not here. There's a pretty good chance you're watching online because the world is scary right now. And the fears that you may experience are real. But the advice that I have to help you grow as somebody on the road of commitment is don't magnify your fears. Your fears are big enough. Don't focus in on them. Don't let them dictate your life. If you think of it like a fuel, if the fear is the fuel that powers your engine, you're not going anywhere. It's fine to be aware. It's fine to be cognizant of what's ahead. It's fine to, to be concerned about it, but do not let your fear dictate your life or else you will remain exactly where you are. And maybe you're thinking, that sounds pretty good. But ships are safe in a harbor, but that's not what ships were made for. Christians are not made to live in little hobbit holes. Christians have the love of God dwelling within us, and we have a call, we have a challenge to share that love with anyone who will listen. And yes, that is scary. But don't let your fears take over. Don't magnify your fears to the point where you're laying in bed at night, tossing and turning, thinking about every possibility, everything that's gone wrong in the past. 
which leads me to my second bit of advice for those who are on the road of commitment. Celebrate your successes. See, it's been said that, that folks on this road, on this path, that they have what's called success amnesia because they're so focused on what could go wrong or what has gone wrong that they completely overlook what has gone right. They completely overlook how far they've come on that road. Instead, they're just focused on what's ahead, worst case scenario. No, take time to celebrate how far you've come. Take time to show, like, listen, I got through this fear, I got through this difficulty, and yes, there's still things up ahead, but I can worry about those later. I need to focus on my success right now. <laughs> and then lastly, oh, the last one, um, work, work on trust. Work to trust more. And I know that sounds so difficult. Like you're thinking like, preacher man, okay, sure. Just work to trust. That goes completely against everything that I'm wired to do. It's not just me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything. And that is a process that somebody on this road will work on their entire life. The process to trust not just the people around you, not just the world, but ultimately to trust God, to trust in the almighty, all-powerful God who is by your side and will never turn his back on you. He will never betray you. He will never let that trust be misfounded. See, our God loves you. One of the traits of somebody on this road is they have mistakes in their lives, like we all do, right? But they're so afraid of being found out. They're so afraid of somebody finding out their weakness that they have it tucked away in the very back corner of their closet. They're so afraid of that coming to light that they live their life in fear. My friends, God already knows. And he loves you all the same. There's a Bible verse from Romans that I think speaks directly to the person who's on this road, who's on this path. This comes from Romans chapter 8. It says, uh, for I am convinced, right? Right? trust once verified, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My friends, nothing that this world throws at us will take away the promise of everlasting life. Worst case scenario, you get to be in heaven. You get to be in paradise with God eternally, free from pain, free from sorrow, free from this broken world. That's pretty good. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough getting there because we do live in a broken world. We live in a world with sin. We live in a world with pain and sorrow. And so I pray for you. I pray that we're able to be bold, that we're able to share the love that we have, that our identity can rest in Christ alone. Because we are children of God. And our Heavenly Father will never betray us, will never turn his back on us, will never lead us. My friends, God loves you. No matter what. Do not be afraid. For he is with you. Amen? Amen. Now will you please pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today, first of all, thanking you. Thanking you for helping us to see more about ourselves, to learn about how you wired us, how you made us to be for our unique personalities. Lord, we pray against fear, against anxiety, against worry. We pray that your love, your truth would break through, your gospel would become our identity, that we'd be able to share that gospel with so many people in our lives who need to hear it. They need to hear that they are loved just like we do. Lord, give us the boldness and the courage to leave behind the safe spaces that we have made to step out into the scary world because we know, God, that you are with us. Let that be our courage. We pray all these things through your son, Jesus, who gives us hope, who gives us life, who gives us love, who through his sacrificial death gives us forgiveness and grace. In his name we pray, amen.